I'm Michael Artis. That's Matt Mankiewicz. How you doing? Nice to meet you. You are the proud owner of this Saab 93. Yes, I am. Excellent. Um, would you tell us about it? Oh, boy. It's, um, I first saw this car in the early 70s when I was living in Burlington. My wife, on the advice of her father, for some reason, bought, had bought a 6196, and I had to keep it alive, So, which involved going to the local dealer and uh, buried in the back room, heated storage with no windows, he had this car. I tried to buy it. Fortunately, at that time, he didn't sell it because I would have treated it as a daily mode of transportation and trashed it in a year or two. Every year or two after that, I talked to him. He had no interest in selling it. Four years ago, he finally agreed to sell it. I knew the condition was nice, but didn't realize how nice it was until I actually got it home. The fact that it was in a room with, um, with heat and no windows meant everything was, was basically static. The vinyl on the seats was, was undamaged. Uh, the interior was undamaged. It's almost like a time capsule. It's a time capsule. You, you want to uh, walk us through the interior sure. and show us the engine and uh, tell us uh, what you love about it. How often do you drive it? Uh, I drove this. I drove this from Central Vermont Thursday. Seven-hour drive. Uh, wow, a seven-hour drive and a three-cylinder two-stroke. Well, it was it was good until yeah. I hit Danbury, and then from Danbury to uh, down here, it's like driving a crippled. It's like a crippled bird because this car obviously can't go as fast as cars down here. Uh, but it was a, fortunately an uneventful trip, which is always always a good thing with a car like this. Well, first of all, we have to explain the whole background of this car. Saab is an acronym. It stands for Svenska Aeroplan Aktiebolaget. Okay, Swedish aircraft comp company. Their original purpose was building airplanes and continue to build airplanes while this car is being made, and continue. To, as a matter of fact, that's the one part of the company that still survives. The aircraft the company, it's the aviation component. Well, they realized that the Swedish military was not going to be able to support them all just by buying aircraft. They had to diversify into something else, and the something else were, was cars. Now, they used all their aircraft knowledge to develop this teardrop shape. This was on the va uh, original Saab and continued throughout the, to the 96. But little refinements here and there over time. This is early, what year is this one now? 1959. 1959. So by 1959, here's where we are. But this car started as a two-cylinder two-stroke, and it took the likes of Eric Carlson to prove this car's name to the world. You know, um, what I think is really interesting is uh, how well this car has been put together and how it seems like uh, it's got some very interesting hinges and, and, and the way the doors open and... and the windows and it's sad to see that Saab isn't here to this day. Every Saab has ever been always been front wheel drive, at least had the front wheels driven. Of course, yes. we had the all wheel drive uh, Saabaru, but uh, original Saab design is always front drive. And as we were saying, you were saying the original Saabs were two stroke cars. Now, in my hand, I have a Saab spare parts kit, and this you just bought from the dealer and you just kept on yes. hand in case something went wrong. Yes, the parts that never failed uh, is what you had, and usually the part that did fail wasn't in this, but uh, it made it made Saab feel good. But look how roomy the car is. This is a very small automobile, and yet you can still see four people comfortably. Well, it's a lack of a transaxle hump, front-wheel mm -hmm. drive. Absolutely. Now, another little thing is, despite the fact that the steering wheel is on the left, at this time, the Sweden drove on the left. Correct. And they drove on the left, because they felt that it was easier for the driver to get out on the left. And then they did, of course, announce it ahead of time. But one day, they all switched over to the right with a minimum of fuss, minimum of accidents. Uh, Matt, look at this sunroof. Yeah. Now, you did tell me about this one. That is original. And basically, you can see where the storage makes a factor. It's still... That was a factory option? Yes, it was, and it was primarily sold in the American market. Uh, I've talked to Swedes, and no self-respecting Swede would have spent the money for a sunroof. <laughs> but so it was primarily American. Um, same sunroof that was used on the uh, the 220s and the Mercedes 300s of the period. It was not an inexpensive option. Why the suicide doors, though? Uh, it was ease of getting in and out of the car. Mm -hmm. um, ultimately, what happened is, you know, they're not safe if you're driving down mm. the road and. Yeah open the door, then it's going to rip the door off, which happened to a lot of these. Right. But you, you see the construction there. That's pretty solid. Um, unibody, but a well-done unibody. 
just like every stop after too. Oh yeah. Yeah, oh, definitely. The engine, yeah, the engine's the best part of this thing. Wow, look at that. Three cylinders. And two strokes, which means you had to pre-mix your gas and your oil. Did you have to put it in the gas tank or were there you separate put it, tanks? You put it in the gas tank. Okay. So you actually had to carry these little cans of oil in the trunk. It's a it's a rather small engine. How, how uh, You said that it can't keep up with cars on the road today. Caution, always add oil here when refueling. Turn over. Cycle to engine. Add one quart of... SAE 40, 40. non-detergent oil, then fill a tank with six to eight gallons of gasoline. SAE 30 may also be used. Wow. The tag was unique to the American market because the Europeans were used to two-stroke cars, and uh, which is the other reason, the reason that they did this. This is strictly American. Wilson uh, created a two-stroke oil for Saab. The first two years that they sold the cars in the States, they were not using the proper oil, so Saab came up U.S. Saab USA came up with this. This bracket is unique to the American cars, not used in the European cars. What, uh, what, did, what did this car cost new? And by the way, uh, Surly Spawn said it looks like it just rolled out of the dealership. Well, that's, thank you. I would say, I believe, around 14. Yeah, I, I figured. 14 yeah. grand back then would have been a lot of money. Oh, yeah, 14 grand would have been an ad an hour. Well, this engine, I believe that, well, this place was about 850 cc's, right? This, this is 750 cc's. 750, so yeah. You said it can't keep up with the cars on the road today when you're when you're coming down the, you know, 95 uh, or 87 it can, or something. It, can, it certainly can, in terms of speed, it can go 65, 70 in a pinch. Right. The issue at that point is I'm trusting 9-inch drum brakes. Right. So but if somebody suddenly stops in front of me, then it's I'm in mean, right. trouble. This is, but that's impressive given the fact that this is a, such a small engine. We see all these engines here; they're huge engines stuffed in, in tight spots. This is a, a small engine uh, dropped in a big spot. However, well, it was it was the principle of, of a two-stroke. It's yes. supposedly in theory, it's twice twice the power at the same speed. Not actual, but it was you know it was certainly a better power curve than than a four-stroke. Two power pulses per revolution instead of one on a four-stroke. But, again, they could tune these engines up to as much as 85 horsepower, which made them formidable rally cars. But undrivable as street cars. Yeah. Now, another thing, because the Americans had their issues with the adding the oil, these engines would, could wear out very quickly. But I noticed how compact they are, and I remember reading a story about somebody who had one of these, and he actually kept a spare engine in his trunk. Uh, Larry Williams. And actually, uh, and I, my wife... <laughs> What's not, what's not happy about this, but our, we regard as our chase car, our normal vehicle, followed me in this. I brought a spare crankshaft, a spare set of pistons, and my toolkits, just in case. It would have taken me two to three hours if it, on the side of a road, providing somebody didn't stop me, to have rebuilt the motor and put it back in the car. Another reminder about two-stroke engines, there are no valves, no valve train whatsoever. The only moving parts are the crankshaft and the connecting rods and the pistons. That's it. Their theory was it was seven moving parts was how they advertised it. And that's, again, amazing in its simplicity, but it's also not the cleanest thing in the world. No, it's, it's, it's burning uh, basically, a, uh, I use a synthetic concentrate, but it's burning for every five gallons a pint of oil. So you use the synthetic oil and one for two uh, two stroke oil. That's interesting. Oh yes, it's uh, it's far better than than the original oils were. If this motor is taken apart, it's the bearings are saturated with oil. If an early stage, if the motor if I took the motor apart, the bearings are dry. Now, fortunately, as the U.S. started imposing emission regulations starting in '66, Saab had an alternative, and that was the V4 that went into the '96. Ford, one of the nicest motors, uh, almost bulletproof. The Ford Taunus motor. Yes. Nice motor. What is something like this worth today? Not what you paid for. What is it worth? It's basically whatever anybody wants to pay. I've had yeah. some interesting offers on it, which I will not not say. But mm -hmm. I've also had interesting offers on the low end too. Yeah. There is there is no. There is no real book value to these because there just isn't that many of them. Are you, are you sad that there's no Saab today? Um, kind of, but more because of I knew a lot of the people that worked for Saab rather than for the corporation itself. Yeah. In terms of my parts and information, it doesn't affect me one way or the other. Right, but I just thought, but, you know, having oh no, a Saab and, no, no. and being a big fan, and there are a lot no, of big fans out there. It's, uh, it's the people that work for Saab that, uh, that I used to party with and have fun with. But, uh, but notice another thing we should point out, the, the original Saab logo too, 
that is an airplane with uh, twin, twin engines. So they never lost their aircraft her heritage. Now, of course, people say the beginning of the end for them was when GM took them over. I would put my foot in my mouth. I kind of disagree with that. I really? Think, I think if anything, General Motors kept Saab alive longer than it probably would have if they not intervened. In the long run, you're probably right. Yeah. I, I think that that's actually a really good point. I think yeah. that uh, General Motors, I, I think Saab had, unfortunately, had no life left in it, and General Motors breathed a little life into it, and then ultimately ran into its own problems and had to uh, consolidate brands and all that stuff. And it was it was not necessarily a good marriage, but right. uh, it worked it worked okay for a while. Yeah. This uh, this is story story in back of this. When I got the car home after I bought it. Underneath this was the original. Oh, wait, did it have like the the oil can and everything in the car? Or did you get this stuff? That happen? stuff I've had. Okay. But uh, this, uh, when I got it home, they pulled the jack bag out. It had never been opened. Wow. Which means the jack had been never had never been used. At the bottom of the jack bag was the original toolkit. Amazing. The original tool what are these? It's the only night three I've ever seen. Uh, yeah, these are shoelaces. No, no. Oh, these, uh, you know, since, since... That might be the funniest thing that's happened at the at the two days we've been here. What about these? Oh, those? Those are shoelaces. They keep the whole thing together. Okay. Yes. But you picture, you know, in the factory, Sven going down to the local hardware store to get some shoelaces. But these, um... These mount, these mount here, mm -hmm. so you can control the temperature in the winter. You can vary it so that you close the airflow. This, the shutter, wow. same thing. You close it in the winter and keep the engine warm. Very nice. That's really interesting. Well, I, it was, they were not expensive cars, but they basically were almost handmade cars. Mm -hmm. So there was all these little, little funny things that they added to them that you don't expect to see. Right. Very cool. Thank you for sharing. Thanks for coming here. What do you think of the Greenwich Concourse de Elegance? Oh, this is fun. Sure. I'm, it's, the weather is nice today, which is a pleasant change. Yeah, yeah. yesterday it was sweltering. We still came and we enjoyed it, but uh, today is much nicer. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Congratulations and good luck. Enjoy thank the rest you. of the show. Thank you. Thank you very much.